Hi, it's Darnell with Whale and Recipes, and today I'm going to be cooking up some salmon from Frozen in the Ninja Double Air Fry Oven so we can see how it does air frying. And let's get cooking right now. Okay, so I've got a frozen four ounce salmon fillet here. It's got skin on one side and the meat on the other. I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the pot and I'll prepare it here in the air fry basket. All right, so we got the salmon fillet out and I'm going to be basically coating it with a light coating of extra light olive oil. Then I'll season it with a little bit of ranch seasoning and a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. I found that the mixture of the kind of the soft and kind of the hot kind of is a nice combination to throw together. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put a little oil on top and then put a little seasoning on top. Since it's got skin on the back, I'm not going to bother with, bother with the back side of it at all. So just put a little, little oil on it and then kind of rub it in there like that. I guess I can put some oil in the back just to let the skin get some oil. So like that there. I'm just going to take a little, try to gently shake on a little old man. I don't want to get a lot on it. I don't want it to overpower the ranch, but just a little. All right. Now I'll throw some ranch on top of that. And i to make sure I got it on the side that's going to let a little out and not a whole dump of it. So, here we go. Just kind of coat it with that there, kind of good. That'll work. That will work with this side. So, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the cooker set. The hand I'm using didn't touch any food, it only touched the spices. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the cooker on. I'm going to do a well for the bottom go to air fry and for the temp I'm gonna bring the temp down to 375 so a little lower there and for the time 20 minutes and I do want to mention for the oil I use that's extra light olive oil do not confuse that with regular olive oil it's different but you can look that up can go ahead and hit start let things preheat and I'll bring you back after the preheating is done to get it on in there. All right, I'm gonna pause since the preheat's done. I'm gonna put it on the middle rack level since it's not gonna drip a lot in there. No heating elements on underneath the cooker anyway for things to like drip directly on. And just leave that basket in there with nothing but the pull-out drip pan there. And so I'll bring you back in a bit and we'll see how things are later. Alright, I let it go the full 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get things out and check the temp now. There we go. Looks pretty decent to me. We'll see what the temperature is. Whoa, we're coming in a little light there on the temp. Too light. So I'm going to have to stick that on back in there and let it do some more work. Let's see. We'll hit this again. And for time, this time around, let's bring it down to, let's do seven minutes. We'll hit start with that. We'll see if that works. But we'll just let it keep on going for seven more minutes. This is taking a little longer than I would expect. So we got nothing up top, so it's not like it's having to distribute the power or anything of that nature, even though when I've cooked two things at once, things usually turn out okay as long as I'm not using the maximum heat temperature for either the top or the bottom. I have noticed if you're using like the max, like if I'm toasting up top and cooking something at a lesser degree on bottom, the toast will take much longer to cook. I'll have to use, use like double for the toast if I'm cooking something down bottom, even if it's at a lesser degree. But there's been no smoke issues. There's been some drippings that went down to the drip pan, but no smoke problems at all. I will say, I don't usually notice smoke on the bottom, but up top here, not good with smoke at all up top here. So, just something else to keep in mind. And we'll let things continue to cook. I'll bring you on back. All right, 
away. So a full 27 minutes with a preheat. We'll see uh, how things are looking now after 27 plus a preheat. Let's see what's going on in here. Alright. We're at 130. I mean, I guess, you know, yeah, probably could have flipped things over. Maybe it depends on me flipping things over, but, you know, given its skin on one side, I don't want to flip things over to have to get it fully cooked. And it is kind of, I guess, on one side there. Looks like it's getting a little overcooked on this smaller piece. I don't think spinning it around to the fan is going to help that. So, I guess I can flip it over. I guess I'm, I may have to flip it over given the circumstances here. Seems like my fish may not cook if I don't, you know. I guess if I want to cook fish, I better flip it over. So, turn it back around like that. So, we'll try that. So, wow, a little, little weak there, for sure. So, for time now, I'm going to give it, let's do four minutes, okay? We'll see if four is enough. We'll let that run. Flip plus four minutes. I'll bring you on back in a little bit. Alright, so now we've basically let things cook for 31 minutes at 375 with a preheat. Flip things over. I will say, I've done this fish in lots of cookers. I never had to flip it over. I never had to cook it 31 minutes at 375. Basically, every other cook I used, I believe, has done things in quicker time. So, this is uh, pretty slow and uh, not too good. I guess I could have used a higher temperature, but as I said, if other cookers I've done this with, that wouldn't be necessary. So, yeah, now it's hot over there. Let's see in here. Yeah, it, it's like super hot in there now. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to flip it over. Let's just check, see what we get. Yeah, it's like in the 150s on the top now, so. Finally done. <laughs> so I'm just going to take and basically plate it for now. Just let it rest for a little bit, for maybe about five minutes. Alright, so gave things time to cool down, turn the light on so you can get a better look. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just I'll just cut it down the middle here so we can see how things look. See that's how things look inside there. I'm just gonna this is cut it, I guess it's kind of flaking some, but got some pieces there. We'll go ahead and do a taste test. So thank God for the salmon, and I'm going to go ahead and do a taste here. Okay, salmon tastes good, seasoning tastes good. It's not like totally dried out, it's not like moist, but at the same time it's not all dried out either. It, you know, it turned out okay, but it did take way longer than I expected. I mean, there's no uh, second guessing it. It's a little weak on the air fry. You'd have to crank your temp up more than probably with some other air fry ovens and other types of similar cookers of that sort to get the air fry you want out of this one here. But still, we got our, our uh, fish cooked, and so it's all good in the end. So nothing that's video sponsored. Nobody gives me any of this stuff. And there's lots of ways to help the channel in the video description, such as my cookbook, merch, memberships, donations, link to the Amazon shop that basically you pay the same price but help the channel. Even if you're just doing other shopping, you can still use that as a jump off point. It's got a search box and all that stuff there. And so if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon, and good eating.